The president says he will review the case of a special forces soldier charged with murder by the army. Last week, Army Major Matt Goldstein was charged in a 2010 killing of a suspected Taliban bomb maker in Afghanistan. This was part of the battle in Helmand province. Major Goldstein is now accused of premeditated murder. Joining me now, the father and mother of Major Goldstein, Jerry and Nancy Goldstein. Thank you both so much for being with us. I know this must be an incredibly difficult time for both of you. Thank you. So, Thank you. Thank you for having us. So, Major Goldstein, your son, Matt, first admitted to this killing in 2011. The killing took place in 2010. In 2011, he admitted it to the CIA as part of a CIA job interview. When did you both first learn of it? We both learned about it um, probably shortly after he'd been in Washington when the command called him in and told him that he was under investigation. He came right to us about it. What was your reaction? Well, we had watched our son uh, from young be a, a great leader and a great example to his men and to his family. And it was shocking to us that um, we were sure that he had done everything right. Uh, he told us very little about the details at the time, but we always remained confident and very frustrated um, that the Army was taking this action. So after 2011, when he talked to the CIA, there was an investigation, but then the investigation seemed to subside. Fast forward to 2016, when your son does an interview with Fox News and Brett Baer, and they have this interaction. Watch. Did you kill the Taliban bomb maker? Yes. So it was after your son admitted it on TV that he killed the bomb maker that the military began to investigate again and is now prosecuting. Does your son regret doing that interview? Absolutely not. He has given the same information from day one. There has been no uh, attempt on his part to say he did not do that. Uh, in the boarding, when he was boarded by the military, he had the same information was out there. They had the CIA report, and the conclusion was he, he followed protocol, and he was found not guilty of, of any action, any dishonorable action of that nature. So uh, nothing has really changed, and that's what makes it kind of a surprise that we're going around this uh, this road again mm -hmm. because the information has already been looked at and decided upon. Well, we, you know, he went through a, a, a lot of things that are just now coming out, having his Silver Star taken from him, denied the Distinguished Service Cross, being removed um, from Special Forces, taken, having his tab taken away with no due process. Uh, Jerry and I sat through those six days of grueling Army um, Board of Inquiry. We watched um, men testify weeping uh, mm. about his saving of lives, not only American, but Afghan lives. We saw his military, his Marine code um, chain of command, not the Army chain of command, but the Marine chain of command defend him during the board. We watched um, NATO legal experts say he committed no war crime. And we also saw a CID um, lead detective exposed to being a liar, bringing lies to Matt's chain of command about evidence. So this was a long process before the, the Fox interview. And, and you've seen a lot more uh, of, the, of the case than we have. Obviously, we knew about it from the reporting. And one of the issues being raised, and Matt Waltz, who was just elected to Congress in Florida, who was a former Green Beret commander, he asked the question, was this bomb maker actually in custody when he was killed, because there might be a legal distinction there. If he was in custody, then he would be protected by the Geneva Conventions. You're both nodding your head no. You don't believe he was in custody? No, he, they had released him. He was no longer a detainee. Um, and then, Matt, uh, M Michael Waltz, the congressman-elect, also notes, in his mind, one of the issues here is that our country is putting our servicemen and women in an impossible situation because they don't necessarily know the distinction. We're capturing Taliban all the time and don't know where to put them. What's your reaction to that? I think that's 100% correct. I think 
Many of the situations that you are putting our soldiers in, you're giving them the authority to conduct a war. War is not something that you can just sit down and figure out and, and do it overnight and just make all, the, all these decisions. These are decisions that have to be made quickly to save the lives of their own soldiers plus the Afghan, Afghan people. It's my understanding that one of the main reasons we were over there is to protect the Afghan people as well. So, you know, to sit here and, and, and second guess everything these folks are doing when decisions have to be made immediately. Mm -hmm. And that's what the Army's trained them to do over so, the years. So there to are make these obvious, decisions in very stressful situations. There are obviously international implications here. A provincial council yeah. member in Afghanistan resp responding to all this this week says, for a strong country, there should be a strong code of law and order. If you break that code, it means you have no faith in justice. And then the people of Afghanistan will doubt you when you ask people to adhere to principles of justice and human rights. But Matt bro broke no code. That was proven in the Board of Inquiry. Um, everyone that has testified for him has said that he is honorable, has never uh, committed any crime, and um, he was working within the rules of engagement when this incident occurred. And um, the Afghans interviewed at the time mm -hmm. all testified to that. So as you know, well know, the president has now weighed in on this after watching I think a piece about this on TV. He says he is reviewing the case now. Uh, there are some who have noted that the president making that public statement could create an unlawful command influence and gum up the works in this case. What's your reaction to hearing from him? As far as I'm concerned, uh, I don't know what the implications might, might be as far as the law is concerned, but he is the commander in chief if he feels that action is not being taken in a proper way as he learns more about this situation, we are in favor of him doing whatever he feels is necessary. So we would encourage his involvement. And uh, it's, it's more, more than just Matt. There are a number of people, as you have mentioned, because of the rules of engagement during that time, that have put people in precarious situations. And some of them are paying the price who are in prison right now. And there's also an Article 37 that gives the president um, the lawful right to intervene in um, this kind of situation. Uh, Jerry and Nancy Goldstein, thank you very much for being with us, helping us understand this case more. We know this has to be a difficult time for you and your family. We do appreciate it. We very thank much appreciate very much. the opportunity. Thank you, John. Allison. Awesome.